Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports United News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be a recap of the Chiefs team advancing in the postseason to now face the Colorado Avalanche. Is after facing a lot of adversity, well, not a lot, but adversity being down 2-1 to one in the series. The St. Louis Blues with the veteran presence and a lot of guys that are still on that team from that cup-winning team, like O'Reilly and Shen, to name a few, are able to prevail in the end. But let's get right into it. The Blues immediately erased the home ice advantage of the Minnesota Wild as they were able to take them down 4-1 to one thanks to a great rebound goal by Ryan O'Reilly staying with it and David Perron being the puck hound he is. He's not just a wrist shot gem that's able to score because of having one of the better wristers in the game, but he also is a puck hound that's so good around the net and that's why they were able to win that game. And also, early on, Billy Huso was key in that game. As in the first period, the Wild had a decent push. Um, they just couldn't get anything going. Huso was strong. The Blues were then able to score their first two goals by O'Reilly and Perron at the end of the first. And then the Wild kind of just couldn't get anything going at all. So I thought Huso, who of course wasn't strong at certain parts of the series, and then Bennington came in, did have a very good game one. When it comes to Game 2, uh, Joel Erickson Eck, who was in a off-first game for the Wild, I thought one of their strongest skaters, came out and was able to pot a goal. Goudreau then had a very nice rebound goal. Kirill Kaprizov continues to just snipe him. Eck was then able to get another one. Kairou Tarasenko, then it was the battle of the Russian snipers, which it was a couple times in the series with tre with um, Vladimir Tarasenko and Kirill Kaprizov. But... <clears throat> This game was just all wild, as then we had another uh, hat trick in this series, as Kirill Kaprizov was able to get the hat trick in that game to be able to propel the Wild over the Blues 6-2, to two, as that was just a great start by the Wild. They were already up 3 nothing after the first, then X scored to make it 4 nothing. The Blues did battle back with the goals by Kairou and Tarasenko, but then Kaprizov flattened them and put it away with his tip-in and his empty netter after the goal getting called back on the offsides to be able to actually get the hat trick and complete the hat trick there. <clears throat> and then the Wild go back-to-back. -back. Um, the game that was on TNT, they are able to prevail and win 5-1 to one as Flower has another good game. Jordan Greenway had a beautiful setup by Erickson Eck as his hot play continued into this game. And Kirill Kaprizov, Kirill the Thrill, was able to score again as Ryan Hartman was able to pick up another apple. And then uh, Zuccarello, deciding to shoot instead of pass, was able to bury one, assisted by Kaprizov, which was a nice play by him to stay on sides. Uh, and then Joel Eriksson was able to score again. O'Reilly did score to avoid the shutout, but then Jonas Brodeen put that away with the empty net goal. So at this point, it looks like the Minnesota Wild are sitting pretty in this series, but then that's just the beauty of the NHL playoffs and why they're so exciting. You think a tide's going this way, and then all of a sudden the Blues come in and have a fantastic game four as they put Binner in net, and Jordan Bennington only allows two goals, of which I didn't think he could have, like, he's not saving that snapshot by Kirill Kaprizov, and that backhand, the fact that Matt Boldy got his stick on that in front in that net battle was just bonkers, so... I don't put anything on Bennington in that game. I thought he had a very good game. I thought Flower was okay in this game, but definitely wasn't as sharp as you would like to see. And this was one of the games I could have sold Cam Talbot just coming into to try to spice things up and get the Wild going as a whole just so he wasn't so cold when he did come into Game 6, which was an interesting decision. But um, in this game, the... The Blues started the scoring with Jordan Cairo. David Perron, the puck hound again, was able to have a very nice backhand goal in front. Cairo was then able to have a very nice deking backhand goal. And then guess who was able to get the empty netter after Boldy was able to make it 3-2 to kind of seal that deal there. That was none other than the puck hound David Perron again. And then it comes, who's a free agent this offseason. So it's going to be interesting to see if I remember correctly he is. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with him. And then Ryan O'Reilly was able to score on the power play just to seal it on one of those, kind of where Braden Shen usually is set up one-timers in the slot. So that then um, 
evens up the series as the series then <clears throat> goes into, oddly enough, another 5-2 to two win for the Blues on ESPN as Jordan Bennington gives them the 3-2 to two lead in Game 5 of this series as the Minnesota Wild aren't able to get anything going in this game as Ryan O'Reilly was able to score. They did show more fight, though, in this game, definitely, than Game 4, where the Wild just were not really able to show a heck of a lot in that game, where in this game, O'Reilly did score the first goal, then Kirill the Thrill scored two power play goals to give them the lead, and then in the second, Saad tied it up. But then in the third, this was just a game, really, that the Wild, they weren't able to find anything really fully because Kirill was the only reason, obviously, they were even in the lead to that point, and then it got tied uh, by Brandon Sod, and then after that, the Wild in the third lost the third period, and this is kind of what I would say was the downfall of that series, because it was still 2-2. If they were able to kind of have a decent third, it would have been interesting to see what transpired going forward, but I feel like having that much of a downfall of a third, where Vladimir Tarasenko just took it upon himself... Uh, the Russian sniper for the Blues, the great playmaker sniper for the Blues, just like Kirill is for the Wild, took it upon himself and scored a hat trick, a natural hat trick, three straight goals in the third period. So this series had three Hatties, um, absolutely nuts. You have Kaprizov, you have Perron, you have Tarasenko. But I think the Tarasenko one might be the most nuts just because he just took it upon himself to close out a game in the third period, and the reason I say I thought that was the beginning of just the end of the Wild is you saw it in game <clears throat> in game six then. They were fairly flat in that game, couldn't get much going. They let Nick Letty come into the zone and score in the end of the first. Ryan O'Reilly then is able to pot one in the first ten minutes of the second. Bozak then scores after Torpachenko makes a very nice cutting play to the net, and then uh, Tarasenko was able to bury one of his own. The only goal that they were able to get was a nice blast by Dumba, but then Colton Paranka was able to send one down and score on the empty net on a wrister. So that was what all she wrote for the Minnesota Wild, but I would have to hand it to the Blues in this series. They faced some adversity, the former, obviously, Stanley Cup champs. They still have guys on that team, like I said, like the Parankos, the O'Reillys, the Shens of the world that were on that Stanley Cup winning Blues team. So obviously the experience prevailed in the end, and they didn't show any worry signs at all in this series after being down 2-1, to one. and that, that that experience really showed as they were able to win back-to-back 5-2 to two games and then only allowed them to score one goal so their defense got immaculate and their offense really picked it up after only having a good game one and then getting flattened in game two and three. The Blues really just picked it up and rallied together, and that's what experience does sometimes. E-Money, when we did the series prediction, got that right. He picked the Blues, I picked the Wild, so that was one of the ones I got wrong. I've actually been doing better predicting the AHL playoffs as far than the uh, NHL, where we both did get the Avalanche right, though, and we both did get the Tampa Bay Lightning right, and the Panthers, actually, so I guess I shouldn't say I'm doing better with the H. I'm doing good with the NHL. It's just that series, I did pick Minnesota, but the Blues prevailed, and I'm fine with that because I love Greg Berube, former Flyer player. It's nice to see him and Braden Shen continue to succeed, and it's nice to also see Jordan Bennington have a nice bounce back and get going again in his postseason after having a very off regular season, so that's very nice to see from that perspective as well. But this has been a recap and analysis of the Wild versus Blues series. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above on these huge widgets to keep us growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June. Stay safe out there, everybody, and enjoy the hockey.